two so far, haven't they? So, uh, I've, got, I've, got, I've got one Essex next. I think so. I want to join Essex next. You're the only one that's done two. Ooh. So far. I know. Good, isn't it? That record's going to go yeah. soon, but you know, enjoy it while it's there. Well, that's why I've got another one here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, I, I will hand you over to uh, Stuart, who's going to talk to you about. Here we go, put the next one up. Put the next one up. Hey! Well, well, right. Feed the kids, feed, feed, feed the soul, feed the world. Oh, my God. Right. There's you. I'm going to try. Do you put this one in? Yes. Yes, yes. <coughs> Okay, so what do I mean by feed the kids, feed the soul, feed the world? Just um, in these know and be known starts, I know there's been a tradition for asking the presenter questions um, so that you get to know them in a, in, a, in, a, in a deeper level. I won't answer some of those, but if anyone's got any questions that would help them get to know me um, a bit more, then make a note of those now, and if they're not addressed, they can come back to them. Any questions? Anything. What do you want to be when you're three? I don't know. Any questions? No? All right. Good. <laughs> can, we think of the, can we think of some? And then you can think of some as you go along. You've got loads when you did yours. Feed the kids, feed the soul, feed the world. Oh! I forgot my props. You've got your props. I, I got props, yeah. Uh, sorry, this is not good for the camera. Do you like to pass that round? Take one off and pass it round. <coughs> Take the one off, yeah, and pass it round. I'll have one as well for fun. So passing round, there's, a, there's some rubber bands going round because I, I, I like, you can see there I've got, I don't know whether you want to call that an, an infinity symbol or... Oh, that's interesting. That's <laughs> not. An infinity symbol or whatever you want to call it. Um, so if you were to make an infinity symbol out of your rubber bands, those of you that have one. Yeah? If you pull that in different things, what's going on? in that. Tension. Tension, yeah. Absolutely. Now I, as we've come through, I, I, I'm a life coach for business owners, if you, if you want to describe it that way. Um, and one of the things that I do when I've worked with people, I find a lot of people start their business based around making a difference in the world. A lot of people come out of corporate life and want to make a difference in the world. So they pull this, make a difference, make a difference, make a difference. And you feel a tension going on in that when you do that. Okay, that's interesting. God, I'm making no money. Feed the kids, feed the kids, feed the kids, feed the kids. <laughs> and all the tension is going on in there. Okay? And what I'd like to suggest as we go through this is that actually if you focus on that bit in the middle, you can open up the sides as wide as you like, but just by focusing on that bit in the middle, and that's the premise of feed the kids, feed the soul, feed the world. We're going to come back to the rubber band in a minute, so hang on to it. Did that make any sense at all? Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> So, I just sort of decided to reject this. I thought that was probably happening early on. Sorry, I'm just going around it. Is it completely jammed? Do you think it was on? Yeah, that's what's happened. Let's try that. So, I'm going to do it as I can. Yeah. Okay. So, this is a quote by Marion Williamson. I don't know if anyone knows Marion. Spiritual path is simply the journey of living our lives. Everyone is on a spiritual path, it's just that most people don't know it. And for 40 something years, probably 50 years if I'm honest, I didn't know I was on that spiritual path. And a lot of the people that I work with and that I know also don't realise that they're on that spiritual path. So, we are human beings, or actually, are we being human, or are we human beings? What do people think? Human being? No. Being human. Being human. Being human. Being human. Okay. What I'd like to suggest is that we are human being human. Yeah? What the heck does that mean? Well, back to the rubber band again. In essence, we are a being. And this came from, the reason I'm saying this in these terms, came from being inspired from the session that I did, giving my genius out with her cat. A, a spirit, a vibration, a little bit of God, if you like. There's a bit of God in each and every one of you, and me. 
And that bit is eternal and it's whole. And we chose to incarnate, and that's an interesting word, because it means to become flesh-like, to become a body, if you like, um, in this human form. And to bring our energy, our light, our godliness, let's say, into this human form. So that we can experience life as a human being human. And that's it, not mine. Okay, so here's where the feed the kids, feed the soul, feed the world comes in. And I'm now describing it in, 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 in that fashion, I'll come on to understand why in a minute. But feed the kids is about being human at the practical level, the pragmatic level, making some money, having our needs met, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs and things, that's what we're talking. We're down at the, the base level, the grounded level. And feed the world is about the, it's, it's purpose, if you like, it's, it's contribution, it's that sort of thing. But feeding the soul is where the passion lies. It's where the real you lies. And that's what I mean by being. That's the eternal bit of us. We just decided to come down here and have a play for a little while. And if you want to go really woo, may have done that several times before in previous lives and may go on to do it again. So feeding the world, feeding the kids, feeding the soul, so feeling the world is why we do it, why we do what we do. And feeding the kids is how we do it, practically, how we make a living, how we, how we do all that grounded stuff. But feeding the soul is who are you being. So we're back to be collaboration, it's back to that, that essence of being. Okay, so why do I do what I do, back to the, back to the purpose, back to feeding the world? That's a picture of the main crossroads in New Akshot, which is the capital of Mauritania, <coughs> the fourth um, uh, poorest country in the world at that time. I was out there helping a team put together a power station out there. And we put together a power station which was 30 watt, 36 megawatts. Now 36 megawatts, there isn't a British power station that small. And that was going to increase their generating capacity for the capital by um, about 40%, and for the whole country by about 30%, putting in one power station smaller than any of the ones we, we have in the UK. And it hadn't rained in New Akshot for about 18 months, and it hadn't rained in certain other parts of the country for about four years. Um, so I'll give you some indication. But for me, the heartbreaking thing, apart, apart from the, I, I didn't put that picture in there, but apart from the brilliant guys who were having impromptu car washes and things, <laughs> and stuff like that, because there's, there's enterprise going on everywhere, um, they, could, they had no means for containing this. So literally the next day, we got kids knocking on the door begging for water at the office where I was working. Um, now these guys weren't begging for water, they were actually out being entrepreneurial. Um, they used to go around all the, all the rubbish bits. They've got fantastic approaches to rubbish out there. It goes out on the street, and because it's dry heat, it doesn't really tend to smell too bad. Um, and it gets recycled, and the bits that don't get recycled get eaten by the donkeys and the goats. Um, so pretty much everything gets, gets shifted. It's amazing. Um, but these are still kids who are not in school. You know, they're out salvaging stuff, so there's enterprise going on, but they're not at school. Oops. But yet, as I say, there's enterprise going on every, every corner, street corner, there's little shops doing this, that or the other. And I really like this one. That's not the kind of thing I was expecting to see in the middle of the next shop. Um, I suppose it's nice and sunny and this sort of stuff. I can take it to the beach. <laughs> when did these pictures take us through? Two years ago, three years ago, something like that. Yeah, they've had some challenges out there since. Um, yeah, they have. Yeah. Um, actually does have a fantastic coastline. I'm, I've actually been swimming in one so it's brilliant because you get the stuff coming across the Atlantic. It, it's, you know, you've got waves of 30 foot waves and things because there's nothing to stop it between there and the other, whatever it is, South America or wherever. So, okay, why is that relevant? Well, in terms of my why, I, I believe that enterprise has the ability to empower and in some cases to ensnare. And the ensnare bit, I think it's a bit more of a first world problem than it is elsewhere. Um, so, 
Uh, I'm involved with, a, with an organisation, I'll stick it on here in case anyone's interested in it. Uh, oops, there you go, let's go back to that one. We'll do that in a minute. Going the wrong way. Oh. Um, an organisation called Kiva. Um, Kiva is a microfinance organisation um, which um, allows you to make um, $25 still, is it? There's heads building out there, I think it is. $25 uh, payments to businesses out in the, in the third world. Um, might just be someone buying um, you know, stuff for a shop they've opened up, it might be stuff for buying grain even to... to but the, the difference is that it's for a business. So even if they're using it to, to do crops, those crops are not for pure subsistence, those crops are to sell. And so from that space of being able to sell, you then generate a little bit of income. And that income creates choice. And what a lot of people tend to do, particularly in the third world with that choice, is to educate their kids, particularly their daughters, um, who in a lot of cultures wouldn't otherwise get educated. Um, and if that business does well, guess what? They might employ some people. And those people then have an additional income, and that gives them choice, and they can choose what they do to them. So I, I have this, this view that enterprise empowers, that enterprise, education, and employment empowers economies. And uh, that's kind of behind what I do. So that's part of the why. The other element, going back, is this here. I don't know if you've seen this from Marion Williamson. This is part of a much longer one that uh, also Nelson Mandela did at his inauguration speech. But our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Uh, we ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? And that's at the heart of uh, being inspired, finding your genius there, and it's in the heart of, what, of the work that I do. Um, you know, I, I had all my issues, all my challenges with that. My history is I was, a, I was an accountant for many years and uh, wasn't kind of the things that went through my mind as to uh, contribution and uh, things of that nature. So I love to help people recognise that you know, they are powerful beyond measure, that they are a little bit of God, using that word, thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to use more and more and more because it's me standing in my truth. Can, can I just add something? Yeah. Because I can't take any credit for you coming up with that. No, you facilitate. Yeah. So, so everybody comes up with something very different and unique for them. And I don't, I don't think I mentioned God, for example, no, once no, ever no, in that whole, exactly. or religion or anything. No, like that. no, no. But it is about creating a space where people get to see something for themselves and they pull it. Cause probably always been there. Yeah. And just knocking lightly, and suddenly you start to hear it. So I just wanted to make that aware. No, sorry, that's a good distinction. Yeah. Um, no, the reason I didn't want to share it at the end of the session was it, 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 it oof. Yeah. Oh, no, that's going to be scary. I don't care. Yeah. Well, the thing <laughs> was, you did share it and, it, and and for me, my experience with you, you just kind of, you know, I just had this another level of seeing things, but you kind of went, mm. yeah. you know, inflate, you know, you inflated. Well, we'll see in a minute how, how powerful it was, actually, something else in the thing. But, um, so that that's kind of my, my why. Um, and then, uh, how, how do I do it? Well, there's a variety of ways. Um, it's not inappropriate to mention it. I also use the talent dynamic model that Andrew does, which I'm a great believer in. I think it's a fantastic model for recognizing you know, who you are in flow, what you do when you're in flow. But two other things I do is mindfulness. And what I wanted to do is rather than have me just chatting away, is for uh, um, a couple of minutes just talk to someone next to you what, what you believe mindfulness is all about. You've probably heard it's a buzzword around, so you may even engage in it. But just have a chat in pairs about what mindfulness means to you for a couple of minutes. And then if you can, perhaps you can share it and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that for a while. I think it's a challenge to be mindful. I don't 
But I think mindfulness is having the intention to bring us back to that. Whether that's, you do that, whether that's daily or morning, evening, or weekly, it doesn't matter. I think it can be delivered in many different ways. And I think that's really important. The choice do you practice mindfulness? Is it something that you kind of put into your everyday? I wouldn't call it that, but yes, every day. Yes. I wouldn't label it in that way. No. Um, but if I think about what I would leave it to me, yeah. yeah. How about yourself? Yeah, yeah, I think. <coughs> I'm, I find myself being, I mean, if this is an accident, being exposed to, um, being in my own way that you just described, but also being aware of how powerful the brain is, how powerful the mind is, and how you're going to go through. So you've rejected parts of your, your health and your well-being, and lost your mind. And all. Uh, one of our collaborations is um, in fact, the um, we're going to talk about the yellow road, which is produced, that supports people who have had a problem now and have mental illness. And you can see in your life all the facts, but the point is just to bring them in. And once you have this kind of weird test, it's how Andrew said earlier about your Walter Taylor having a stroke. Um, yes. um, and how could tell we're a room of collaborators and co uh, 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 supporters. Right. Is it, <laughs> I hate breaking the flow. As I say, this is, this, this is collaboration. This is being ourselves, and it's collaboration. But I just, oops, it'd be good to get some feedback from. So, what? What's mindfulness? Um, some some uh, suggestions of what it actually is. Let's start with maybe what it is, or. What you understand or what it isn't. <laughs> mindless <laughs> it is. I'm <laughs> often mindless. <laughs> Do you know what? I absolutely love that. I absolutely love that. Because there is that there's that thought process oh there you go, a thought process even like that. Um, that do you want a mind full? Do you want your mind your, your mind to be full? Um, and that's an interesting that's an interesting take on that. Yeah, so being being mindless is perhaps the promise um, that you're yeah, looking like for. Yeah, mindless, like careless, unthinking, uh, yeah, clumsy, yeah. Yeah. Right, like okay. unaware. Unaware? Yeah, not conscious of what's okay. going on and what I'm doing. Just bumbling along, you know. Okay, cool. So that's the opposite of mind. That's the opposite of mindfulness. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I thought I was still saying that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So therefore, on that basis, then, then aware would be... Um, yeah, what was the other word you said? I just said what mindless is. Like I'm being unaware, bumbling, not yeah. conscious. Not conscious. So 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 not conscious. So would mindfulness be conscious then? Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Probably else, sorry. Jeremy? For me it's um, it's standing in your higher self, observing what's going on from your from that higher self. Um, yeah, and being guided by them. Okay. It comes back to your notion about being a little piece of God manifesting in the sentient level Ooh. and allowing that little piece of God to inform you at that sentient level to ensure that you are on the right path and to guide you. So informing and guiding. Reminding you that 
reminding that we are just playing down um, there, practicing. You've taken, you've taken that <laughs> a stage further, but that's brilliant, that's brilliant. So that's, that's what it means for you. Any others? <laughs> well, for me, it's sort of having a real understanding of the way you are, why you react to things, and maybe then, once you understand why you react to things in a certain way, trying to then think about how you can react differently. Okay, what do you do? I like that. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, being fully present and focused on something. Present and focused. And not multitasking, cluttering up. Uh, so uh, avoiding those. Yeah, so, avoiding yeah. those and just being even if it's just on. I don't know, eating an apple, but it, doing it in a very mindful and pleasant way. So that's mind cluster particularly, is it? Mm -hmm. Sorry, yeah. I couldn't listen to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but general, cluster generally. Yeah, yeah. just that self talk and business. And ah, self talk and business, that's good. So just letting all of that go. Well, awesome. What I'd like to propose. We can. So who, who, who practices some form of mindfulness? Yeah, so, okay, cool. What, what I'd like to propose to you, to me, I think that one of the, the, key, the key elements of this, um, a, a little, very short exercise can help you with. You can do this eyes shut or eyes, eyes open, it, do, it really doesn't matter. But what I'd like you to do is just be still and count the thoughts that are going on in your head. And um, I'm going to very arbitrarily time 30 seconds because my second hand is not on my watch. <laughs> Alright, so just, just count the thoughts from now. So, who had uh, more than 20 thoughts? More than 10? More than one? <laughs> no thoughts at all? No. Okay. I just don't know. Count. Oh, count. <laughs> okay. I, I probably should have premised this with a sound, a smell, or anything else is, 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 is kind of a thought as well, that you, if you're recognising something. But, okay, so most of you have more than one. Yeah? So who was doing the counting? If you could count the thoughts. Would it be fair to say that there is some other entity, some observer, that was doing the counting? Yeah? Is that fair to say? Good, because it's, it's a helpful premise. And so that's really what mindfulness is, is about being aware. It's, it, 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 it's, it's all of those other things that you've said there as well. It is it, absolutely all of those things. But it's just being aware, being conscious, being mindful in that context, not full of, you know, mindful of thoughts. Um, that there is that observer. You, if you can count your thoughts, would it be fair to say that you are not your thoughts? And that is the big mind shift I think with, with, with mindfulness is that you're not your thoughts. Your thoughts will happen. They will continue to go on in your head. Let's again, let's do this one eyes closed if, if, if you wouldn't mind. So it's going to be a very short one again. Let's imagine that you're um, lying in a, in, a, in a meadow and you can feel the earth underneath you. Gentle breeze going on and you're looking up at a blue sky. And there's not a cloud in sight. And he's looking up at this blue sky. And then a little bird comes across. And he wants this bird going across the sky. And you think, oh, where's he going? Why is he on, here, on his own? He's got no mates. Is he lonely? And then he disappears off out of your vision. 
and he's staring up at the sky again. And you're nicely zen, so I don't really want to take you out of that, but if we come out of that back into the room for a second. Firstly, what I'd, ask, I'd like to ask is, how, how did that feel, just taking that, whatever it was, 20 seconds of stillness out of your day? You want to describe that? It felt light. Yeah. Like, easy. Yeah. It's calm, calming. Calming. Other than when I brought the bird in, were there many thoughts going on? Yeah. No. And, and when they thoughts come, did they come? Did you just let them pass on through? Cool. What happened when I brought the bird in and then, well originally the bird just came and started flying across. What happened? How did you think? I'm sorry that the bird might be for me. <laughs> sorry the bird might be for me. Yeah? Nothing changed until you started implanting thoughts, which I when immediately rejected those aren't my thoughts. Correct. Absolutely. Because it's exactly that. It is being aware of your thoughts and the power that you give them by attaching to them. And so that's why I put that other stuff in. Oh, obviously lonely. Because does that happen in life? You sit there, and, yeah, it could be a beautiful day, and this bird goes across, and all oh, your attention's gone off there. But that's fine. That's the thoughts. You know, you just bring your attention back and go on with something else. But oh, how's it lonely? Where's all his mates gone? And suddenly, you know, your attention's over there, or your awareness is over there, rather than here, which is where you, where you previously were. Um, and that's what that's really what goes on with our thoughts and to some degree my, yeah, being mindful is just being conscious or aware of that and there's all sorts of techniques you can do to with breathing and you know eyes shut eyes closed and all the rest of it but ultimately um, it's about that that calmness that lightness that moment of, 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 of stillness that's all it is um, what I'd like to do uh, again, if I may, another, another exercise with you is um, you, can, you can either share it in pairs or do, if people feel brave enough to just shout them out. Let's, do, let's maybe just do it in, spare, in, in pairs, but very, very briefly from Cam. No, no, what is your. Look at this, Sweetie. Yeah. I'll go down one more, I think. Um, there we are, you see, we're bringing them in. Like, all this heart activity going on here. Uh, yeah. Um, yes, your heart's nice hope. So what, what, what is it that you, your heart really desires at its deepest level? I want to, so let's just maybe throw them out, share them. Andrew, I'm sure you can, happy to share. Get them oh, what? Well, wisdom. Wisdom. And if you had wisdom, how, how would that feel? Very wise. <laughs> so wisdom. I mean, that's I mean, if I if I Absolutely. get to that point, I mean that's it, isn't it? Really? Fantastic. Mm -hmm. To love and be loved. To love and be loved. So love. Happiness. Happiness. Words. Mm -hmm. be fulfilled. If you've got that point. You'd be completely fulfilled. Fulfilled. And if you were completely fulfilled. How would that feel? What would you have? I'd know I've done my time. And You've done your time. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to leave this mortal coil. Yeah. 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 Content. And if you felt content, what would you have? Peace. Peace. All very valuable. I mean, ultimately, it's that. Yeah, I, I describe it as that still, still silent space. Again, talked earlier on, well, sorry, Andrew did about content and context. Stillness is the context, and the sounds that we hear, all the content that goes on around it. Back to that balance again, the rubber band. That's that stillness. This is this is noise. Um, and sorry, uh, silence and noise, stillness and movement. Stillness is the context, movement is the content, um, and, and space. You know, space is the, uh, the context, and everything we fill it with is the content. Yeah? We're, back to, we're back to the rubber bands, we're back to that same infinity symbol again. Context is a bit in the middle, so that matters. Um, 
it's interesting when you ask people that question, and, and you know, people might say health, and you say, if you were healthy, how would you feel? Oh, I feel love. Oh, I feel peace. Uh, if I, if I was wealthy, yeah, okay, that's great. Um, and then, how would you feel? Love, peace, joy, wisdom. Yeah. Everybody on the planet, including those people fighting for ISIS, have a heart's greatest desire, and it will be one of those. It will be joy, it will be love, it will be peace. So how do we collaborate and connect around people recognising that? That's what we really want to say about mindfulness at the moment. There's loads of techniques for, for being present. I think I heard you say that you know, in your, when you, your thing. It's about being present, being in this moment. Core process is the uh, other one that I do. As indeed does Mr. Horder over there. Um, I'll do it for time. Five minutes? Well, at least. Okay. Yeah, it's absolutely <laughs> time people Okay, so that's mindfulness. Mindfulness. Don't tell you who's completely present. <laughs> mindfulness <laughs> is about who you're being. You know, we were talking about human being human. Mindfulness is, is helping you be who you really be. Um, and so the grounded, centered, and connected, that's another another element of who, who, who you you know, being who you who you be. So you feed the kids from a space of groundedness, from that connection with Mother Earth and all that nurturing energy of Gaia, Mother Earth. And by being connected to the universe and everything else that is. <coughs> but actually a lot of it happens from being centered on your heart and your intuition and everything that sits in there. Um, so again, that's sort of connected with the mindfulness thing. Uh, so core process. Core process is a tool that I use with uh, clients to help them understand initially who they are being at the centre. Andrew mentioned that his is encouraging potential. And when Andrew is in the energy of encouraging potential, it's palpable. And I saw it today when he gave his presentation. Um, Mine is awakening freedom, and uh, part of the element of, of awakening is that awakening to your, your God, godliness or your godhead, and I was denying it, so bless you for that. Um, but when people understand what it is that they do when they're, when they're most themselves, it's a very gentle process. It's purely telling stories, and from those stories we end up with these two words, an action verb and a noun free-flowing bubble, flowing love. This is just a couple of examples of my clients. It's an anchor and a touchstone to remind yourself of who you be when you be your best. Um, but then when people recognise that, they want to look at the, the, uh, the other two. They want to know why that's important. So why is awakening freedom important? And how do I bring the essence of awakening freedom out into the world, the practical, grounded bits of it. And there's a process I can go through for there. And my, my words for that was, originally my word for my core uh, purpose was God. A word I never thought would come out of my mouth. And then I disowned it, I changed it to infinity. Which has exactly the same meaning for me. Um, what came up on being inspired was, um, just out of nowhere, bolt out of the blue, reclaiming God. God's gone off in all sorts of directions, in religions and various other bits and pieces. And so what I'm about is helping people reconnect with that God in there, inside every single one of them. And how I do it, um, the word that came up for me was leader. So this is me for the first time stepping up and <laughs> being a leader by doing a presentation. I've never done this presentation before, so. Um, and as I say, I can help my clients work out who they are at their best, why they do it and how they do it, using core process. So, whistle stop to about human being human, does that make a bit more sense now than it did before? Um, and back to the rubber bands, we've got the rubber bands, sorry. <coughs> so we've got, the, we've got the rubber bands. 
and we and we've got this potential for tension going on. But actually, we're focusing more on that being in the middle. So we're not doing it, the, the tension's not going quite so much now as we're focusing on that middle bit. So what we can do is we can open them out. Yeah? As wide as we want. So what we can do from that space is we can feed the kids as much as we want. We can be as wealthy as we want. There's nothing wrong with money, it's a create it's a medium of choice. We can feed the world as much as we want. You know, we can be as altruistic as we want. But from that centre space of who we really are, who we truly are. And actually, it's all one anyway. At an eternal level, um, we have an illusion, that human illusion, that we are separate from the rest of the multiverse. And the reality is that we're not. We're connected, we're, we're collaborative, that's why uh, big collaboration appeals to me so much. But we chose to come here and be human beings, to be humans, and to step away from that and have that illusion. It's called dualism. Have that illusion of separation. But the reality is we are whole and complete. And that might be it. So, just in final, is it, um, so, yeah, why, why you're here, I think we've probably covered that. Sorry, that was um, yeah, the elements of, um, of core process. So, core practice is how you manifest it, core process is who you're being, and core purpose is why you're here. But we've covered that. Uh, I'd ask you, to, the, 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 there's, a, there's a choice there, if you like. In this human form, in this dual, dualistic form, where we recognize that we are A, human, and B, eternal and light beings as well. Are you perfectly imperfect or imperfectly perfect? It's your choice. I would suggest you're one or the other. Or both. Or neither. <laughs> Any questions? Brilliant. Yeah, I'll say yeah. <laughs> I think it's the first time I've heard dualism in any big collaboration that I've been on section, so I really, I really yeah. enjoy hearing that. Cool. So, I know, do you want to say a little bit more about that for maybe people that... Well, okay, okay. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's back to... Funny enough, I meant to do it when we were talking about human being being human. It's that, it's that it, when we have this, the two elements where we, um, I believe that we are all vibration, we're all resonance talking in Andrew's language. Um, and uh, you know, we chose to come here, spend a little bit of time in this human form, doing some practical things to experience that. For no, for no other reason than to experience that. And then we might go off and be a light being on another planet. We might go off and just be stardust. We might go off and come back here again because we've got more to learn. But that's why we're here. However, when we come down and, and incarnate into our human bodies, we forget that. That's why I love you saying about remembering. It's about, it's about remembering our true nature. But that's where the dualism comes in. The human part of us wants to have this human experience. And it, uh, it um, has all the practical elements of that human experience and it has that desire to make a change and all those things that we were showing there in the human parts of that diagram. Um, and uh, sometimes it takes us forward in our experience of our magnificence, and sometimes it doesn't. Anything you'd like to add to that? Yeah, I've got a question. Who are you being now? Who am I being now? I hope I'm being awakening freedom. Do you need that hope? What do you I, hope I am being awakening freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. <laughs> well done. Just an, just an observation. Yeah. Um, I I can't think of any any other sort of uh, environment where one can have that sort of conversation in a sort of business context. Mm. And I think when I was talking earlier, I was, I was saying that you know, big collaboration to degrees is a work in progress. And one of the most important challenges we've got is how do you actually capture this sort of experience in a in a, in a phrase that will attract people in the sense that the way we tend to introduce it tends to be very left-brained and it's very sort of, you know, 
is that works A, B, C, D, and E. And actually, it is English, actually a combination of that, but, but also this sort of conversation and creating a community that's capable of having both of those things, recognizing the strength of it, taking into, a, into our lives in a practical sense, business or family life or whatever, working with groups of people who think in a similar sort of way. And the power and the freedom that comes with that is, I think, uh, extraordinary and it's unique. How do you actually, how are we actually going to capture that such that people get it easily? I mean, I was having a chat, was it Justine? I was having a chat with Jessica in, in, in the break about saying, you know, you don't really get B collaboration until you actually start sitting in a meeting like this, as opposed to a cold presentation of it. And I think one of the challenges for us is to find a way of capturing this and ensuring that the, 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 the essence of that is in the, the front end room. I think it's brilliant. Thank you. It doesn't um, match. Oh, absolutely not. That's interesting. That's a really corporate looking mm -hmm. and not at all about what we've experienced. That's my big fan. Oh, thank you. That's, yeah, that's very helpful as well. Because yeah. we, are, we are evolving, you know, we're still a relatively new group. I'll let, I'll let the family talk about that rather than me. That's great. Yeah. Well, uh, well, really thank it. you very yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. That was really, really good. I think we all know.